Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a new episode of Flesh Wound Farce, where we review and discuss your and our favorite comedy films. This is the world's first and only combination trivia host and professional wrestling announcer of Chilean descent that currently resides in Southern California, Ozzy V. And with me as always, first in the Northern California Bay Area, world famous juggler, Greg Larson. How you doing, Greg? I'm doing well, doing well, but I'm just, I'm, I'm a little confused these days. Better not have. Okay, go ahead. Your name on your screen just seems different. And why? Of course. Why is that? Very first thing you say. Happy New Year. (laughs) How are you, Greg, turns into, hey, what's wrong with your name? It does look different. I was going to ask him that before the show. I mean, besides the asterisk, something is different. What am I missing? Okay, I'm only going to do this one time. One time, and that's it. Real quickly, I went up against Amari Cooper, who had a 40-point day. Didn't even matter that I had Brees Hall at a 30-point day. What really kicked me in the nuts was having Brock Purdy as my quarterback. What was I thinking? Merry Christmas to me? More like a lump of coal. That's all I got to say about that. I'm still the five-time 272 champion. The most times anyone's been champion in that league, because that league sucks, but I'm still better than them. Whatever. That's all I'm saying that. We're moving on. Also with us, Flesh Wound producer Todd. How you doing, Todd? Does that mean you didn't have the trophy anymore? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, slapped from both sides. It's okay. great. All right. Okay. You're in a different location, okay. but I all mean. All right. Yes. I'm we're from I'm 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 in Flesh Wound uh studios right now. I did not lose my home due to losing the championship that's that's not a thing uh however back to business you just you, lost the trophy okay that i said back I'm just, well, I'm just, nobody, listen. nobody had a medical emergency to stop the game that's why that's why he lost it this oh, year. oh 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 i'm not even gonna get into that because that's not what the show is about the show is about comedies and the comedy that we are reviewing and discussing today is Amazon Women on the Moon, released on September 18th, 1987. Todd, do you have a trailer available? Yes, I do. Are we <laughs> is with the trailer coming? Did you say rolling? I, I just, I, I, I was flustered. I was flustered because of a Universal, mind. Universal, the studio that brought you such classic motion pictures as All Quiet on the Western Front. E.T., the extraterrestrial, and out of Africa, is proud to present Amazon Women on the Moon. <laughs> Featuring Steve Gutenberg, Rosanna Arquette, Lou Jacoby. Where am I? <laughs> Pretty scary, huh? Ooh. Ed Begley Jr., B.B. King. Did you know that every seven minutes a black person is born in this country without soul? Tiger, yellow. <laughs> Russ Meyer, Ralph Bellamy, Monique Gabrielle. <laughs> that is not how it is. <laughs> Griffin Dunn, Steve Forrest, Sybil Danning. Oh, Steve, save yourself. Henry Silva, Steve Allen, Kelly Preston, Carrie Fisher, and Arsenio Hall. <laughs> Amazon <laughs> Women on the Moon. Enough, Doctor. I know you have, but have you? Amazon Women on the Moon. The new film from directors Joe Dante, Carl Gottlieb, Peter Horton, John Landis, and Robert Weiss. And that was the trailer for Amazon Women on the Moon. Again, as mentioned, various directors including joe dante robert k weiss carl gottlieb but here's what i had a very i mean initial thoughts going into this right now again also starring i apologize rosanna arquette michelle pfeiffer our city hall featuring steve gutenberg as as holland it's definitely a film in the vein it it kind of uh, yeah I, I guess like more of an updated version with different people and different writers, but 
it it seemed very tight. Nothing seemed really slow about it. Everything was really coming at you as quickly. Like it actually seemed more in line with more like a modern movie rather than a movie in that time of the late eighties where it would take time for something to develop or it would maybe be front loaded with a bunch of gags and then kind of need to finish up the story and kind of slows down towards the end. This I never got that vibe from and it just kept going from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Todd. I have a story. <laughs> okay. Uh oh. So this was as a youth. This was one of the two movies I was banned from watching because <laughs> wow. for some reason, like the timing of the the pet house playmate. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> like I got, I, I I think I was probably watching at my grandma's house, so that may have been not been the smartest. So my grandma got mad, so my mom banned the movie. <laughs> it's like one of the two things I've ever been banned for watching. So every time I watch, I tell her I'm watching it. <laughs> but yeah so so i grew up and of course i mean that i already loved the movie before that so getting on my band list so that was even better <laughs> greg um yeah i we've talked about this movie a few times um about watching it at some point um and i'm glad we finally did because i hadn't seen it much like now is this an official sequel is it unofficial to it's it's loose i mean yeah it, it's always talked about together and then you you have the john landis connection too mm -hmm. so it yeah. is like a, kind of a follow-up too but because really it does sequel. i mean it, same idea Expand. yeah yeah and and it like that it kind of has that monty python flying circus you know kind of sketches that just like throw in and out throughout the whole thing and um so i'm i hadn't seen it much like a I, spiritual successor it, there you go. There you go. It's fitting. Um, yeah, and and I'm glad we finally checked it out because um, this was one I really did want to watch, but I didn't want to get to it before we ended up reviewing it. So I wanted it first uh, first watch take, and even it, it did have a, a more notable uh, set of stars in it, uh, but I think I don't think that added to it. You know, I think that. Um, it actually kind of took away a little bit um, from from kind of how that the first film felt, but it was still a lot of fun. You know, I still had a blast throughout it. Yeah, I I think there's also might have been some element, <clears throat> excuse me, that maybe at the time it felt mm -hmm. it fit perfectly. But because mm -hmm. we've seen a lot of these people in others, other things that to us, maybe it seems like it takes away from. They, they were pushing as an all star cast, though, with lots of cameos. Fair point. I mean, but I, I get what you're saying. It, it's never bothered me. I, I, I get what Greg's saying. Like, I'm just I'm just used to this. I actually saw this before Kentucky Fried. So mm. I do. This is definitely my favorite of the two. Gotcha. Plus, I got banned. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, very tough to pick a favorite moment. There's, there's a myriad that you can choose from. Uh, I, I like the sl the traditional slapstick of the first scene in the apartment, but having a roast at a wake <laughs> was pretty good that that whole se sequence had me going pretty well and then the way it ended was fantastic so i i gotta go with the wake slash roast all right greg um i'm gonna let todd take the next one just because i have a I don't know. Maybe it's not, but I, I don't want to take his if mine is what his would be. Uh, there's so many on this one, and I think I might know which one yours is then, so I'm going to leave that one. <laughs> um, uh, I, I Actually, I have like a favorite line, and then I have a favorite like skit. Um, I love Bullshit or Not, the Nessie right. is Jack the Ripper. 
Uh, it's hilarious. But my line is, and it is from the opening. Is it okay if I do that one now, real quick? Go for it. All right, and ignore that. <laughs> I don't know. It might be somebody calling you saying it's not a good idea. Yeah. Um, and that is, it, it's from the opening that Ozzy was talking about with the slapstick with Arsenio Hall. Just the delivery of, look, the bitch don't live here. <laughs> <laughs> That, yeah, every time. Well, I, I mean, it. what made that so great is that was woven into all these things that were happening within the apartment, and it was the third time he got the call. So right when you heard that phone ring for that third time, you were waiting for something good, and it was like such the perfect, appropriate delivery. Right. That it was, it was just perfect. It was, yeah, absolutely. Greg, all I have to say is Andrew Dice Ray. <laughs> that whole scene, like that bit, was just brilliant. The payoff was fantastic. Uh, yeah, that that I, I was so happy with how that that whole moment went. And if anyone's not seen this, I have a feeling there's a lot of people who haven't seen this film, so I don't want to go into too much detail, but. If you don't laugh at that, man, I don't <laughs> like we'll just call you Ozzy. You don't have a sin, you don't understand comedy. Are you kidding me? Does that mean you want it? Is no, I don't you? understand humor. Jack's such a snip. I should have never skip that. And the fact that you said it after I asked you to repeat it was like <laughs> anyway. <laughs> What were we saying? Every Greg? time. Okay, I'm sorry. Was was there anything? Yeah, that was it. That was it. Oh, you know, yeah. I okay, see that's not the one I thought you were gonna go with. Mm. But um, yeah, Russ Meyer too. Like I'm a big fan of his movie. So that if you know that like if you get the cameo it makes it like he's known for like uh busty women movies. There's a poster right there on the wall, right next to Devil's Rejects, Ozzy. So <laughs> so I'm a fan of his director. Okay. Got it. Got it. Understood. So getting into ratings, I had an initial rating when I finished, but as I kept thinking about it more and more in my head, the rating kept climbing. And I don't know if it's perhaps how it's going to feel on the second run through. Mm -hmm. I think I would appreciate it just as much. But for me, I have it at a four and a half. Interesting. So, so I I did before hopping on here. I was like, you know, I want to watch this with Jackie. So I and I was happy to go through and watch this a second time. Um, and if I could give this movie a six, I would. But much like Ozzy's Championships, I'm going to keep it at five. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, I that's great to hear. I I am also a five on this one. Um, I've loved this one since childhood. I recommend it. I'm glad you both enjoyed it. Um, I think Ozzy needs some ice for his burn, but it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every you know, year. Hold on a second. Wait. Every year since 2014, if I've lost once, I have not lost twice. So next year, you'll see that trophy back here, and you'll have nothing to say. There's going to be no stupid asterisks, whatever the hell you're going to do to get out of my skin. Greg, so the one I thought you were going to mention was going to be Son mm -hmm. of the Invisible Man. Oh, got it. Yeah, no, that was brilliant, too. Like, that, that, I don't think there's a scene in this film that you can't be like oh this is great you know but i yeah i hear you you know that was definitely one of those that i was debating between there's an actual movie studio retro media who uses a sample from the video pirates just the i'm so scared over the <laughs> fbi warning on every one of their releases so. okay so it's a five from todd and greg Four and a half from me, probably going to be a five after a second run through, but that is available to rent or purchase from your favorite 
digital content provider. Also, any announcements from Flesh Wound? Well, I, also, there's a special edition DVD or Blu-ray from Kino Lorber that has some nice special features, some of the TV footage. Um, so deleted scenes, um, they didn't make the final cut. Deleted scenes that did not make the final cut on the special edition Blu-ray. Yes. Sounds fantastic. And mm -hmm. yes, upcoming tonight on Flesh Wound, um, we are going to have a brand new Squared Circle Society and talk about everything. I know Dan's excited about the Jericho casting couch, but we'll, we'll see what we talk about. <laughs> Ozzy, you're more than welcome to join. No, I'm fine. Allegedly. Greg. Yes, sir. Any any news before we head out? No, I'm just going to go off and join the circus. That's it. <laughs> well, I hope that works out for you. Thanks. And ladies and gentlemen, now that the holidays are behind us, I will be hosting trivia back on Mondays at the Lake Forest, rather at the Rush Barn Grill in Lake Forest, beginning at 6.30 on Mondays. Also available every Tuesday at the Brewery in Placentia, beginning at 7 o'clock. Wednesdays in Los Alamitos at Griffin's Grill, beginning at 7.30. And Thursdays at the Honeypot Meadery in Anaheim, also at 7.30. Free to play and prizes for the top winning teams, with every song having to do something with the answer. As crazy and twisted as it may be, but it'll make sense nonetheless. So, having said that, if you guys don't have anything else, I'll be we nice will to leave say no. everyone... <laughs> okay very nice very nice he is world famous juggler greg larson i'm ozzy v and that's flesh wound producer todd see you next week right here on a brand new episode of flesh wound farce <laughs>